what does it mean to repent? That's a question that comes up and there's some back and forth. And I don't know why there seems to be back and forth. I know that there are those that think that when you say repent, that some feel as though you are telling them to stop doing something and they think that maybe your salvation is now based on works. No, your salvation is not based on works because you're someone is being told to repent. Repent is something that they've been told to do all throughout the book from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Repent just simply means to think differently, to change your mind. It always refers to something having to do with our thinking. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of words that use the, the one of the root words of repent, the Greek word, which is metanoia. There are a lot of words that use the word naus, which is for mind. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and pull this up. Let's go to uh, Lagos. And here's the word. Uh, looking at the BDAG means to change one's mind, refill, to feel remorse, to repent. Well, look at this. Matter of fact, let's look at the bottom part. Uh, change one mind, to feel remorse, to be converted. These are the words that we see that accompany what it actually means to repent. Now, where this word comes from, let's move down a little bit further. Uh, let's drop down to see what the word comes from. Um, here we have this word. We see the words that are used, metanoe, which is meta, which is to two words, after, which is meta, and then nous, or noe, to think. So after you think, or think after, about what? This refers to what we think about something. Well, what is the something that we're thinking or what we're changing our thoughts about? Well, it's about sin. That's what we're required to repent of. Repent of sin. Repent of sinning. That does not mean that to repent of sin means that you have to stop sinning. The command is not to stop sinning, though there is a command to stop sinning. God is saying, I don't want you to sin, but I want you first and foremost to think differently about sin. Let your mind be changed in regards to sin. Why do we say so? Well, let's drop down a little bit further. Let's move down further and let's look and see how this word is used. Let's go ahead and click on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to notice all the words that are used. So repent, obviously being told, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, in Matthew 4, 17, repent for the kingdom is at hand. So we keep seeing this. Notice what it says in Matthew eleven twenty. Then he began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles were done. Why? Because they did not repent. What well, did not repent of what? Well, did not repent of their sins. The man of Nineveh uh, will stand up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it because they did not repent at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Drop down a little bit further and let's go to a few other passages that I think also help to kind of bring this out. Um, Peter said, Acts 2.38, which we have also highlighted, uh, he said, then repent each of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Again, for sins are in view here. Uh, chapter 17, verse 30. Therefore, having overlooked the time of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all people everywhere should repent. Repent. What does that mean? Change their mind. Change their mind about what? In regards to sin. As a matter of fact, let's drop that. Man, let's go to Acts 26, 20. He says, um, but kept declaring both to those of Damascus first and also at Jerusalem and then throughout all the region of Judea and even to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God. So this changing, this new thought, this attitude uh, regarding what? Regarding sin and turn to God, performing deeds appropriate to repentance. Now, that's something that's interesting. We don't talk about a lot. We should. Remember when John is speaking to the Pharisees as they're coming to him, he calls him a name. He calls him brood of vipers. And he says, what fruits of or what deeds of repentance do you bring? In other words, people understood that when you speak about repentance, something should accompany, something should follow that. That is deeds, fruits, fruits of repentance. Should we have fruits of repentance? You absolutely should. Now, who judges the fruit? Who determines how much of a um, uh, of a harvest of fruit should you have? Well, none of us. You determine it yourself by yourself. You examine yourself and obviously God. Only you know uh, what sort of fruits of repentance you should have. And you should have some. You should be able to name those fruits. You know what? There are things that, that I used to do, as Paul is saying in Romans 7, the things that he wants to do, he doesn't do. The things he wants to stop doing, he continues to do. But he makes, an, he, he makes a clear uh, distinction in Romans 7, that what he's wanting to do, the things that he wills to do, he uses the Greek word thaleo, which is how he desires to do. We know that his mind, his heart, his inner man desires to do those things. The sin that he does 
It's not what he desires. So there's a differentiation between what you do and what you desire. So a repentant heart, a repentant attitude is one that desires to do right because he no longer desires sin. He thinks differently about sin. Going back to this in 2 Corinthians 12, 21, he says, I'm afraid that when I come again, my God may humiliate me before you and I may mourn over the many of those who have sinned. Notice what's, what's in view here, sinned in the past and not repented of the impurity, immorality, and sensuality which they have practiced. So this repentance is of or from or away from sin. Any person that can look at sin and not be bothered by sin, any person, even their own sin or other sin, sin should bother you. So what has your mind changed from? Your mind has changed from your view of sin. Does that mean that you're not going to sin again? No, you are going to sin but it should bother you. If sin does not bother you, well, then you have to, you yourself have to begin to question it. If someone says, don't worry about how you feel about sin, you don't have to repent of sin. That is a person that you should never listen to. That is a person that has not come to the full maturity or understanding of the scriptures. You have to have a sorrowful look on sin. Think about it. Sin doesn't bother you, but it bothers God. Sin grieves the Holy Spirit who's supposed to be in you, but it doesn't grieve you. There's a problem. If it bothers God, if it matters to him, matters so much to be in the book and it doesn't matter to you, well, then you are a person, unfortunately, who thinks low of sin, as a matter of fact, has disregarded to the point where it doesn't matter. Meaning that if you see it occurring in you, well, I'm OK. I can sin with impunity. I can live a certain way and it's not a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Even if you are truly saved and you sin is still a problem because sin brings about a brokenness in our relationship with God. There's an impediment there because now we've got an obstacle. Can we overcome it? Well, if you're a believer, you will overcome it, but this still causes problems. That's why there are consequences still for believers who do sin. God has not eliminated the consequences. As a matter of fact, he will highlight oftentimes many of us who are believers who do sin so that others who are also believers will know that there is a consequence and then also so that we can be that we can be brought up we can be restored past our sins if we have if we demonstrate if we show this true change of mind it is god that grants repentance something in the holy spirit that's working in our heart that causes us to think differently how do the mechanics work couldn't explain it but the fact is if you are a believer in christ and sin doesn't matter to you then it's clear you have not changed your mind. Your mind has not changed. If sin has bothered, if sin is there and you don't think differently, well, then the question is, what? how did you repent? What was the repentance from? What ha has your after mind, that's the word, or change of mind, how has your mind changed? If sin is, eh, it's okay. Sin is never okay. Uh, anything that's ungodly is never okay. And so we have been called into a lifestyle of holiness, even though it's a lifestyle that on this earth, we will never fully reach, but we should try. That should be our goal. It should be our aim, our goal to please the Lord. And so a person with a true repentant heart, a true repentant heart, just because you say doesn't mean anything, just because you think doesn't mean anything. What does the Bible tell us? The definition of the word is how we want to use it. And so truly repentant people are bothered by sin. Are truly repentant people perfect and free of sin? No. We need to only look at the apostles to see that. But how does sin bother them? It bothers them a lot. Why? Because it bothers God. And that mind that's in Christ, the same mind that Christ has, should be the same mind that we have that looks down and is bothered by sin, just like Paul was bothered by sin, just like Peter was bothered by sin, just like Jesus was bothered by their sin. So should it be with us. Why? Because our mind is different. Amen.